We are going to start with that devastating earthquake in Morocco. Rescue crews just beginning to reach remote areas of the country this morning as the death toll there continues to rise. More than 2,400 people have been killed, even more injured from the massive 6.8 quake. Yesterday, hard-hit communities were rattled by a 3.9 aftershock. In a moment, we're going to talk to a rescue worker on the ground right there. But first, NBC's Raf Sanchez with the very latest. Raf, good morning. Savannah, good morning. The death toll here in the disaster zone just updated to 2,400 and climbing. And much of the worst devastation is in remote communities like this. This tower is all that's left of what was once the village shrine here. And in the debris, you can find little fragments of people's lives, including their mail and their bills. And all the while, the race against time to find survivors continues. <laughs> This morning, the desperate search for survivors entering a critical phase. Rescue teams from Morocco and around the world racing to make every minute count. It's now been more than 48 hours since this 6.8 magnitude quake struck south of Marrakesh. The most powerful tremor in this region for more than 100 years, sending locals and tourists alike running for their lives in the streets of the historic city. This wedding singer cut off mid-song. I was petrified. Some people were just crying and screaming. But the worst of the devastation in remote villages in the high Atlas Mountains, where adobe homes couldn't withstand the force of the quake. Moments of exhausted joy when survivors are found in the rubble, but also heartbreak when rescuers arrive too late. Working in, in these situations, search and rescue is still paramount, of paramount importance. We traveled up a winding mountain road blocked in places by boulders to reach the village of Moulay Brahim. This village was home to 3,000 people, but locals say at least 40 have been killed. That's more than 1% of the population that lost their lives. Among them, Lawson's three daughters, baby son, and wife. I'm all alone now, he says. I had a home and a family. Now I have nothing. This ID card, Madame. the only photograph he has left. The UN says 300,000 people across the region were impacted by the quake. And in small villages and major cities, many families are still sleeping in the streets, terrified that aftershocks could yet bring their homes crashing down. And there is a lot of concern about aftershocks, but the rescue effort continues anyway. Search teams trying to take advantage of what they call the golden window, the first 72 hours after the disaster, a window that's starting to close.